Hi, greetings uh, to all of you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostolic uh, Faith Mission uh, welcome you. Uh, today is Monday and uh, our session is in uh, English tonight. We welcome you, so please as you pop in, let us know if the sound and uh, if the sound and uh, the image is fine, you can hear me well. Yes, and please let us know also from which country you are watching. Hello, Asha, uh, from the south. Sir. Can you hear me well? Is the sound okay? Yes, the, good evening, Asha. Good evening, everybody. Welcome you. Thank you. Hallelujah. So as you have seen, uh, Everything is okay, so you can hear me. Thank you. So as you have seen on the poster, uh, tonight's uh, title is Focus. It's very interesting for whether you are a businessman, whether you are a preacher, a pastor in charge of the church. But uh, it will be, uh, it is very interesting. So just, just uh, keep uh, connected. So keep till the end. And we pray that the Lord will uh, bless you tonight hallelujah so thank you it's already it's already 25 8 5 p.m here in mauritius so we are live uh, from mauritius uh, please let us know from which country uh, you are watching us live so that we can pray for you pray for your family and tonight we shall pray also for our ex prime minister dr navin ramgulam we are going to pray also, get united to pray also for all the MLAs, for all the Prime Ministers, everyone, for the President and the Government. We stay connected till, till the end. Hello, bro. good evening, Brother Joe. Hallelujah. We welcome you. Thank you. So let's bow our head and uh, we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We praise you. We worship you. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege you are given, giving each one of us to come before your throne of grace. Because your word says when two or three persons are gathered together, you are in our midst. So, Lord, so we place this meeting into your hand. Prepare your children heart to receive a word from you, a word of healing, deliverance, a word, Lord, a message from, me, from you. So Lord, we tonight is not a man will really speak that my spirit and your spirit be one, that you will use me mightily to share your message. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, everyone says Amen. Good evening, Sister Barati. God bless you. And also, happy birthday to your lovely daughter. God bless you. Right. So we, uh, we have seen in the poster uh, that, the, uh, that the title is uh, Focus. Our title tonight is Focus. So as I said, whether you are a businessman, whether you are, uh, whether you are a, a preacher or a, a pastor, uh, well, even uh, individual, this uh, uh, message tonight is for everybody. So stay focused, stay focused to the end. As I said, we are going to pray also for some uh, personalities who have been attacked by the COVID-19 at the end. So once again, the Apostolic Faith Mission will welcome you. Thank you, thank you brothers and sisters, hallelujah. So first of all, let's open our Bible in uh, Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2 Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2 I'm going to read from the NIV version Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2 the word of God said let us fix uh, our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him Enjoyed the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. 
So here you see, when one focus, you are blinded to other things, and you fix your attention on just one thing. By, by so doing, we learn to study a lot by fixing on something daily. We tend to see it even when we close our eyes. When we close our eyes, we see many things more. So this scripture in Hebrew gives us a great lesson, brothers and sisters, that we have to study the life of Jesus. This will allow us not to compete or compare our, ourselves with others. Again, in Luke chapter 11, in Luke chapter 11, verse 34 to 36, Luke chapter 11, verse 34 to 36, the Bible says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body also is full of darkness. See to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light, and no part of it is dark. It will be just as full of light as when a lamp shines its light on you. What this verse says, my friends, this verse says that the light of your body is the eye, is your eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Take for example a binocular. You take a binocular, you have to look through it, isn't it? Outwardly, they look pretty good. But looking through them, you find out they are out of focus. Then what you do? You, have, you need to correct it inwardly. Right? You, 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 do you understand? You take, for example, the binocular, you see? You have to look through it. You can't, you can't take it. You have to look through it. Outwardly, they look pretty good. But looking through them, you find out they are out of focus, which is, which is in need of inward correction. So out of focus, binoculars are, no, are of no use, you see, unless you are wanting a paper weight, you know to hold down something. This even happens in the church, my friend. When we try to look at two things at the same time, if, if, they are, if they are not lined up together, you will become cross-eyed. This even happens in the church. You and I cannot walk in two, in two directions at the same time. You have serious transmission problems. If you try to go forward and backwards at the same time, focus. Focus is the title tonight. We have the tendency of getting busy, becoming stressed, stressed and overloaded with worldly cares that we forget the importance of being focused in spiritual matters. So what we do, so we develop a routine 
that will get us through and with that routine we no longer need to be focused because we can do it blindfolded amen so with the, with a routine we miss what we should be seeing around us and that is opportunities to minister being a witness for Jesus amen so I I as a pastor, a preacher, can lose and have at times uh, uh, lost focus on my calling. You see, friends, serving God takes focus. And it is not seen so much with a natural eye. And much as it is seen with a spirit spiritual eye in Acts chapter 26 verse 19 in Acts chapter 26 verse 19 it speaks here it speaks of a heavenly vision amen uh, the word of God says so then King Agrippa I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven it takes the eye of faith my friend to truly focus on the things of God. God does not reward doubt and unbelief. God only rewards faith. When Moses, when Moses sent out the twelve spies, in Numbers, in the book of Numbers chapter 13, over to the land that flowed with milk and honey, all twelve saw the fruit. All twelve saw the giants. And all twelve saw the walled cities. But only two persons, only two, had a good report. So God is able to give us the land. Do you know, my friends, when you study the Bible, do you know what the children of Israel did for 40 years? They followed a routine. Round and round. Fussing and complaining. Round and round. Fussing and complaining. Until they all died. But, Joshua and Caleb, who could see God fighting their battles, entered the promised land. They remained focused, for the Bible said they had another spirit, and that spirit was God usable. Amen? Hallelujah! So the people could not see that God would give them the land. You see, the promises of God to them uh, that, that believe. Oh, yeah, and amen, yeah, and amen. Focus. Focus tonight. Too much of our focus is on building this carnal man. If you remember several weeks ago on, my, on, a, on a Monday night, and when I was in Creole, I spoke to you about the carnal and spiritual man. You see, life is more spiritual than carnal. Even if you never serve God in this life, the spiritual man will live on in eternity. Eternity. Either in heaven with God or in hell separated from God. So it is very important, my friend, that we focus uh, uh, tonight on the spiritual. Deacons, those who are deacons, those who are leaders, elders in the church. If you are listening to me tonight, it is important, it is very important that we focus on where God wants to lead us as a church body. 
Where would you like to see your church in five years? If I bring this question personally, where you want, where would you see yourself in five years? What will it take to get there? How you are going to get there? You see, in the car, when you are driving, the front windshield is, is usually bigger, larger than the rear view mirror, isn't it? Focus. We are spiritual beings, brothers and sisters. We are spiritual beings going through a physical experience. That why, that why we say this world is not my home, I am only passing through. Focus. What are we focused on? The clock? The job? We need to focus on the cross. We need tonight to focus on the cross. The bread of the Lamb, the lost, the church, opportunities to minister to anybody. Whether you are in a taxi, whether you are in the bus, you are traveling, whatever you are, whether, whether in the marketplace where you are working, whatever you are, see the opportunity to minister to someone. Focus. Our sins are washed away by the blood of the Lamb. But this, you know, this fleshly, carnal, selfish being should be nailed to the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Take up your cross, brothers and sisters. Take up your cross daily and get focused and follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, church, have you lost the focus of why Jesus came? I repeat my question again. Church, have you lost the focus of why Jesus came? Have you lost the focus of the Great Commission? Have you lost focus of the importance of a strong church witnessing to the community, to, to your community, to our community? Have you lost faith that God will give you the victory? Amen. Speaking to those and believers. If you still you don't believe in Jesus, I'm speaking to you tonight. God is using me to, 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 to send a message to you, to speak to you tonight. I'm telling you one thing. What the, listen to that question to you if you're an unbeliever. Can you see your need of Jesus today? I repeat that question. Can you see your need of Jesus today? Can you focus on what God has already done for you? Can you see yourself asking for forgiveness of sin? Can you see that? Come on man, come today. Come today. Yes, come on, come. Open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. He the way, the truth, and life. All, the, all your blind things will go, will, will be erased. You will see the truth. Binoculars we just found, they were out of focus. An inward correction was needed. We also just discovered if you just wanted the binoculars for a for a paperweight, 
to hold something down, focus was not a high, uh, a high priority, nor is it needed. We discovered also this happens in the church. We discovered that many times we, that Sunday morning worship, is nothing more than a speed bump that just slows our day down a little and never gives Sunday evening service a thought. We discovered that we usually develop a routine. Yes, we usually develop a routine for to get us through the busyness and after a while we not need sight to continue when we can do it blindfolded so we also discover this happened in the church my friend and we miss opportunities to witness and minister Jesus to those around us it could be your own family, it could be your own brothers, sisters, neighbors, colleagues, or your both. You're missing these opportunities. We discovered also that Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they could not see God fighting their battles and giving them the promise of the land. The land that flows with milk and honey. And lastly, we discovered that our sins were washed away by the blood of the Lamb. But this fleshly, carnal person should be nailed to the cross. For Jesus said, take up your cross and get focused. Meaning, follow me, focus on me. Let's open our Bible. I give you a story that all of you, you know. Let's open our Bible in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, we are at the home of Martha and Mary. Hallelujah. We are at the home of Martha and Mary. I'm reading from the, uh, from the uh, NIV version. The Bible says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he became to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself. Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. So you see, in Luke chapter 10, we could say that it speaks to us about getting focus. Jesus sends out 70 disciples. They come back rejoicing because demons are subject to them. They thought that was why they should rejoice but the truth of the matter is rejoice because your name is written down in heaven be encouraged the demons are subject to you but that is not the key to rejoicing hallelujah 
Then a man, a lawyer, asked, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26, verse 27 and 28. Verse 26, 27 and 28. Then notice the parable and man falls among thieves. They strip him, wound him, and leave him for dead. The priest came by and went to the other side of the road. The Levite does the same. The Samaritan has compassion. Compassion. Jesus asked which of these was a neighbor. It was the one focus on meeting the need. Amen. So here, here are some. I'm going to share with you. Here are some. Here are some common myths that we have come to believe. Number one is beauty equals important. God will not ask you on judgment day how beauty were you. Is it? And number two, someone wins the rat's race. God is not as interested in what you do as who you are. Number three, hurrying will buy us more time. You see, we just feel the extra time with more work. And number four, downtime is downtime is wasted time. God instituted the Sabbath for rest. Amen. Hallelujah. So the greatest tragedy of this uh, busy life is that same tragedy that Martha faced offered the opportunity offered the opportunity to sit at Jesus' feet, we can't spare Jesus any time. She was distracted. Her preoccupation was with her preoccupation with serving distracted her from what was most important. You see? And, 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 and in verse 40, in verse 40, Martha was worrying over the big dinner she was preparing. So number one, Martha was distracted. Number two, she was depressed. She, she, be, uh, she began to feel sorry for herself. You see in verse 40, it says, Lord, does it seem unfair to you? And then in number three, and, and then number three, she was disapproving. She became critical of Mary for not doing her part. Are you with me? And number four, if you're taking note, she was demanding. She tells the Lord what she wants him to do instead of letting the Lord tell her what she, sh what she should do. Always in verse 40, tell her to come and help me. So here is Martha. Number one is she was, if you're taking notes, she was distracted. Number two, she was depressed. Number three, she was disapproving. And number four, she was demanding, always verse 40. So Martha had lost focus. You see, you see, it is very clear from the Bible, Martha had lost focus. She could not see the most needful things. What she, what she was fixing in the kitchen was not the main cause. Worship was the main cause. Can I hear an amen from you? Worship was the main cause. Martha, over there, she had lost the focus. She could not see the most needful things. 
what whatever she is, she was fixing in the uh, cooking in the in the kitchen was not the main cause worship the lord was the main cause church brothers and sisters my friends tonight let me say it with all the love I can. Worship. Worship is one of the most important parts of our life. Amen? I repeat, worship is one of the most important parts of our life. When we get, when we get busy, when we get, when we get busy for worship, we are too busy are you with me when we get when we get too busy for worship <clears throat> we are too busy too distracted too depressed uh, fault finding too too much and we will be and we will become demanding of others like martha the need for focus Focus can be our best friend or our worst enemy. When we keep our focus on positive things, it is a true friend. But when we focus on the negative thing, you see, it becomes our worst enemy. So my, the question tonight, for you, where is your focus today? Where is your focus tonight, now? Where is your focus? On the clock? On the job? On the water? Verse 42, it says, One thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, and it will not be taken away from her. So most of what we focus on will one day perish or be taken away from us unless, unless our focus is on Jesus Christ. Amen? Let me conclude. Church, have you lost the focus? on why Jesus came? Have you lost your focus on the Great Commission? Have you lost the focus uh, of the importance of a strong church witnessing to the community? You go to your church, but have you gone put to, to, to knock out gold in, in the community? Have you lost faith that God will give you the victory? And believer, I'm talking to you tonight. Can you see your need for Jesus? Do you need, really need Jesus? Do you need a Savior? Can you focus on what God has already done for you? sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins? Can you see yourself asking for forgiveness of sin? Come today. Tonight is your night. It is your time. If still you have not given your heart to the Lord, this is the time. He is the way, the truth and life. He will never reject you. He will never abandon you. He will not ask you any question what you did or not did. Just open your mouth. Believe tonight that Jesus, that God so loved you. He sent his unique begotten son to die on the cross for you. Not only for you, but for, for, for humanity. He died for everybody. And three days after, he raised, he rose from the dead. 
and forty days after, before witnesses, he ascended to heaven and sitting at the right hand of God, Father, interceding for you and me. If you believe this, you confess this. Welcome. I say welcome, congratulate you, welcome. Inbox me. We shall help you to connect with the church. So let me pray for you. Let me, as I told you in the beginning, our ex-Prime Minister, Dr. Navin Rambulam, is sick. We pray, every day we pray for all the MLAs. We pray for the members of the opposition. We pray also for our Prime Minister, for President, for everyone, for those also in the front lines, for the doctors, staff, and for everybody. So that God can give each one of them their, uh, His divine wisdom. We pray for safety. We pray for protection. And tonight we pray, we place Dr. Navin Ramulam uh, into your hand, Father. In Jesus' name. That you protect him. You, you, you protect him. You heal him. Yes, Lord. Heal him. And reconfort his family we pray for the government we pray for everybody so lord you continue to protect mauritius protect all your children i pray especially tonight for the message that uh, you have just given us focus that this will help uh, bless your our children your children god we place the right the rest of the night into your hand in jesus name everyone says amen amen so god bless you God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Hope that uh, you have been blessed. And uh, we, I'll see you on uh, Wednesday in Creole. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Shashia. Thank you, Pastor Patsy James uh, from, uh, uh, the, from Durban. Brother Joe, Sister Barati, hallelujah. Yes, the Andre Marie Silvani and the, okay, Joshua, Joshua, Pastor Joshua from Botswana. Hey, bless you, man. Bless you, man of God. Hallelujah. Ex student of William Carey School. Hey, thank you. Thank you also, Pastor Christian Gilbert, for assisting us also, Tanjona, for assisting me and giving you the verse. God bless you. God bless you.